European Parliament a few months ago, and I quote, the motive is not fate, it is power. Power pursued by ripping countries and communities apart in sectarian conflicts and inflicting suffering across the world. Now, Western media, you were referring about that, refer uh, and like to refer to Daesh with the word medieval. And this, I think, does not help us very much to understand the real nature of the threat we are facing. Because Daesh is something new, something completely new. It is uh, a modern movement reinterpreting religion in a completely innovative and radical way. It is a movement that, rather than preserving Islam, wants us to trash centuries of Islamic culture in the name of their own power. It is not a state for Islam or for Muslims. Uh, as the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar said, and I quote again, there is no Islamic state, but a number of Islamic countries that the terrorists are trying to destroy. And this is the reality that we, are, we have in front of us. We don't say it often, and I think we should, to dismantle the narrative, uh, as well as, I perfectly agree, sometimes in describing the atrocities of Daesh, we do them a favor, because the atrocities for them is a, a way of pursuing their own propaganda. The more we describe them as evil, the more happy they are. So I normally take out uh, from my uh, speeches of my writing all, uh, and also from the Council conclusions sometimes <laughs> of the European Union, uh, all the reference to uh, atrocities, because I think this is exactly their aim, to show how powerful they are through uh, showing how uh, how much they can be uh, evil. Uh, in reality, this is what we're facing. The Daesh is Islam's worst enemy in today's world. And its victims are, first of all, Muslim people. And Islam is a victim itself of Daesh. Islam as a worldwide religion. This is not to say that we should overlook the ideology of Daesh. If we want to fight it, we need, first of all, to know it and to understand it. And we need to know where it comes from and how it got to be what it is. First of all, I believe Daesh propaganda fills a void, a vacuum. The terrorists are recruiting people who feel that they do not hold a place in their own communities, that they do not belong in their own societies. Uh, I was very much impressed uh, when I was visiting Tunis some months ago. Tunisia is a country that uh, we normally uh, indicate as a model, rightly so. Still, it's one of the countries with the highest number of foreign fighters. And I was asking a young girl, uh, very much engaged in uh, civil society, human rights, was asking her, how do you explain that so many people of your age, of your country, um, live? And she told me something I think I will never forget. She said, you know, these young people my age, they feel they have no place in the organigram here in Tunis. They are looking for their own box, for a role, for defining who I am. What is my place? What is my role? Uh, good or bad, what is my role? And I think this is the real challenge we have, not only uh, in the Arab world, but also in Europe. How many young people in Europe uh, have the same question? What is my place in the organigram? What is my role? And that's why I believe that the best possible way we have to prevent radicalization within Europe and in our region is working not only for education, but for employment of young people. Because we have so many well-educated and frustrated young people with a lot of energy, with a lot of willingness to define their place in society and the way in which their own society and their own communities will look like without the possibility of even hoping to do it. I'm not saying this is in any possible way a justification for anything, obviously. Uh, there are uh, individual responsibilities, and every single individual, no matter how frustrated it is, he is or she is, uh, 
is in any possible way um, justifiable for choosing terrorism. Still, I think that if we look at ways of preventing radicalization, both within European societies and outside in the Arab world, working not only on education, but working on employment of young people, and a good employment of young people, uh, is uh, the only uh, possible uh, way forward. Basically, not only a place in the organigram, but a proper place in the organigram. Daesh longs for people who have lost not only their place, uh, their role uh, in their own communities, but also the sense of belonging to their own communities and hope. We need inclusive societies in Europe uh, and elsewhere. And we need effective democracies. So many times we have uh, used the narrative of security versus uh, um, openness or democracy. And this is a false narrative. This doesn't lead anywhere. Uh, we should start telling ourselves uh, that uh, the only stable and safe society is a society that chooses democratic uh, ways and, uh, and patterns. Um, this is the best answer we can give. This is true both here in Europe and in the Middle East. Of course, each country, each region has a specific history uh, and needs to follow its own uh, path towards democracy. I understand you have discussed that uh, during the day. Um, so long, not long ago, still, still today in some cases, uh, there are people arguing that the West can export models or export democracy uh, in a military way or, or in a different way. And I think we have all realized, for sure in this room, we've all realized that this is not really a good idea. Of course, this doesn't mean that we are not ready to support democracy and democratic uh, processes. But the point of ownership of specificity, specificity, specific city, something like that, uh, of the processes is the key. This is what happens when you don't read your speech and, <laughs> and you say what you think. Uh, that's the key. Uh, and we have, I think, to have some uh, humble respect for diversity. If diversity is the core element of our European history and our strength, indeed, uh, we should maybe um, also show respect for diversity when it goes beyond the European uh, borders. We need to understand diversity, understand complexity, which is something difficult, but for us Europeans, a little bit less difficult than for others in the world, because we have lived complexity and we are ourselves, especially here in Brussels, <laughs> uh, very much complex, complex ourselves. Um, but we need to make the effort of stopping for a second and uh, trying to understand and respect and show respect. That's why I'm not afraid of saying that political Islam should be part of the picture. And we should not be afraid of saying that and accepting that. We know very well in Europe uh, that uh, uh, religion plays a role in politics. Not always, not always for good, uh, not always for bad. Uh, it's part of processes. Uh, what makes the difference is if the process is a democratic one or not. That should be the question for us uh, and the key point to respect. Uh, we need to work for regional frameworks, especially in the Middle East and in the Arab world, where everybody has a concrete responsibility and has a concrete chance to contribute. Being Muslim, Christians, Jews, non-believers, Sunni, Shia, Arab, Kurd, whatever. I think one of the weak points of our narratives and also of our policies so far has been to think ourselves through dividing lines, as if it, everybody could fit in a box People don't live in boxes. People live in communities and societies. And the more these societies and communities are open and inclusive, the better it is for the democratic process. Uh, it is more challenging because you cannot put labels uh, in open communities and societies, while you can put labels in boxes. So it requires an effort from our side. But I think the 
real point is to try and support the fact that all communities can be granted with their own rights on one side, which is also the other side of the coin, their own responsibility and their own opportunity to do their part for uh, the stability and the security of their own countries, which is the way we are trying to follow, finally, I would say, in some key Arab countries, like Iraq, where finally we understood that the only possible way is to put together instead of turning apart. Inclusiveness, uh, this can be the key to success outside of the European borders and within uh, the European borders. Um, but when we talk foreign policy, uh, this is true, but this is true also when we deal with our own internal policies and home affairs, inclusiveness. Because you mentioned coherence in foreign policy. I will mention an even more difficult issue, coherence in our internal policies. Because sometimes we go around and preach, and then we look at ourselves, and we have some doubts. Um, sometimes I think that you know, accession processes and enlargement processes take a long time for countries that want to join the European Union. Maybe sometimes we should revise the acquis for the members of the European Union that are members already. We have a problem of internal coherence when it comes to human rights, when it comes to democracy, when it comes to respect of diversity, when it comes to many of the difficult choices we have to make. Not excluded migration policies, but that's another story. That's more for tomorrow than for today. So this says that uh, the battle for hearts and minds is not only a battle that we need to fight in the region, but also inside uh, our uh, European Union. Um, this means also that we need to fight uh, a difficult battle with our public opinion. Uh, this is not a popular argument. Uh, you didn't choose a popular uh, argument, an easy uh, issue. Uh, because probably uh, after so many years of weak policies and weak economies, our societies are naturally afraid. This is the natural result of weaknesses. Uh, whenever you are weak uh, in a society, in an economy, in a, poli in a political environment, uh, you react closing the doors, closing the windows, and uh, pretending you can protect yourself by isolation. While, on the contrary, uh, the only chance we have as Europeans collectively uh, to survive and survive pretty well in this difficult world uh, is being proud and strong in our own uh, basis. And our own basis is the respect of diversity. I said migration policies is more for tomorrow, but let me say one word uh, now. We talk about radicalization a lot. We do our uh, own campaigns and we support others' campaigns uh, for the girls of Nigeria that are victims of Boko Haram. But sometimes the brings back, bring backs, bring back our girls become bring back in their own countries. This is playing a part in the radicalization process. Because there is such a contradiction between our solidarity when they're far away and our lack of solidarity when they are at our doors, that this is impossible to sustain. So I hope that, um, that tomorrow we manage to, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow and the months and years to come, we will manage to show solidarity not only to the girls in Nigeria but also to their sisters and brothers and uh, mothers and, and daughters uh, that sometimes uh, are forced to uh, flee uh, and escape from the very same radicalized movements that we try to fight here without realizing that uh, uh, sometimes uh, our own messages are contradicting each other. 
So we have a hard time in front of us. That's the only clear thing. <laughs> this is the only uh, clear conclusion I can draw. Uh, we need to uh, pass the cultural message, first of all, that can be the basis of our political message, that uh, uh, any attempt to divide the peoples of Europe into us and them brings us in the wrong direction. The migrants and us, the Muslims and us, Jews and us, because anti-Semitism is far from being defeated, in any possible way, me and the other. Also because we learned from our history that everyone is the other. Everyone is the other. And there is no end to this uh, stare of uh, differences. The fear of each other is leading us to conflicts, uh, nothing else. And everybody is the other in the end of the day, also my neighbor. So I would like to see, I hope we can jointly work to find a little bit of self-confidence in ourselves, of being proud of what is the root of our European culture. If we like it so much, being Europeans, well, that's it. Uh, our strength, not our weakness, our strength is our differences. It's our diversity, and we should learn to be proud of it. Thank you very much.